fashion designer Mark Jacobs once said, clothes mean nothing until someone lives in them, which is true. But the problem is that 80% of garments manufactured is going to landfills, sometimes almost unworn, so no one is living in them. The average consumer buys 400% more clothing today than 20 years ago. And there's one garbage truck of textile waste going to landfills or being burned every second. And what about the clothes that doesn't even make it to the market? An estimated 400 billion square meters of textiles is annually produced of which 60 billion square meters end up on the cutting room floor, which is a size as big as Belgium, twice. Each year, the world produces 80 billion pieces of garments. And out of those 80 billion pieces, only 25% a quarter will be recycled. So three out of four garments will end up in landfills or be incinerated. This is a side of the fashion industry we don't see or think about. When we think of fashion, we think of creative expression, reinvention, and pushing the boundaries of status quo. But in 2019, are those the values that we should think about? I started my career when I was 16 years old, in a small boutique, right here in Stockholm. I then worked my way up through my curiosity and my passion for knowledge and my eager to change. Now, after 20 years, I have traveled to several countries. I have helped companies grow their businesses and I have developed a deep understanding on how the fashion industry works. I love shopping and consuming, just like everybody else. But after a few years of working in the fashion industry, I couldn't see fashion in the same pure way as I did before. Knowing that the fashion industry is one of the top three most polluting industries in the world, I decided that I wanted to be a part of a, of a change. I actively wanted to rethink fashion with the inspiration of a few brands and a couple of people who already had the right mindset and progressive thinking for change. To take the first big leap of leaving the security and comfort of employment and start a company based on my passion and my, my idea was frightening. But I also knew that I needed to act on my idea in order to be part of the change. I wanted to create a company that would not only be measured by its creative merit, but also, or rather, for its impact. I started to ask myself, where in the circular supply chain could that change occur? And an idea of using already existing materials instead of producing new fabrics came to mind. If a product is truly circular, it will never have an end to its life, but continuously take a new form. I wanted to innovate knowing that the end of life is the beginning of a new life. I wanted my idea to move away from the linear production chain and into the circular system. So, with the realization that a lot of waste of fabrics is disposed, and with a passion and interest for circular fashion, I wanted to test my idea, even though I know there was no roadmap or existing guideline for it. I walked the known path and started my own journey towards a more sustainable industry and, of course, with a lot of trial and errors. 
The World Bank estimates that 20% of industrial global water pollution comes from the treatment and dyeing of textiles. So what if we could start a company using surplus fabrics so we produce a product but still urges people to consume better and smarter? The word surplus fabric is what companies call all the leftover fabrics once production is over and orders are complete. According to the factories, these fabrics, which could be of the utmost and most beautiful thing, is considered waste and no longer of any value. But the process of acquiring access to these so-called surplus fabrics was so, was so much more difficult than anticipated. After sending hundreds and of emails to factories all over the world, we received one reply from a factory in Portugal. So with this single thread of hope, my partner and I packed a suitcase and went down to Portugal for a first trip and with one idea in mind, to unearth surplus fabrics which could be transformed into beautiful garments. For one week, we drove from factory to factory, knocking on doors to see if any factories were interested in partnering with two girls from Sweden and hear a business proposition to let us in their warehouse. On, our final, on the final day, before we were scheduled to go back to Sweden, we did not have one single yes. Not a single factory was interested in partnering up with us. So we didn't even know it was going to make this. The final day, we went to a children's wear factory. It was a factory that actually wanted to start making adults' clothing. Maybe it was the combination of intrigue and curiosity, but they granted us access to their warehouse. And we saw for the first time that there was a glam of hope of getting our supply of surplus fabrics. Now, two years later, our idea is still a sprout of a company growing every day. Within the year of signing our first order and producing our first garments, we have sold around 3,000 products. We have around 35 retailers in Sweden. And we are, of course, still a very small company. But I'm proud since one sold dress is one step closer of becoming uh, influential circular business within the, within the fashion industry, helping the world reducing its carbon footprint since at least 70% of a garment's environmental impact lies in its fabric production. So as complex the circular business model is, as creative as ever it is, Think about it. With all this knowledge and need for change, creativity is infinite. Today our ambitions are only limited by our imagination. Creativity has never been more important. And the global economy is now challenging the traditional business model. We are standing in front of a new time that is too important to ignore. So, I want to challenge you and ask you this. Can you come up with a business idea that could add value to the ecosystem? What can you do to help to push the agenda on sustainability globally? And how can you show a commitment to eth ethical, social and environmental behaviour? 
And remember this, we can still make beautiful things with existing materials or waste. Since our planet is, planet is flooding with new materials, now is the most exhilarating time to be an innovator. Waste isn't always ugly. It could be the opposite. It could really be beautiful in its purest form. As the British designer Paul Smith once said, you can find inspiration in everything. If you can't, then you're not looking properly. Thank you. <laughs>